In this third presentation on the annual plan 2023-24, I will cover some of the uh, options the Council considered to further reduce the impact on rates and decided for one reason or another not to proceed with. As a reminder, the Council's proposal is to increase rates revenue by 9.06% uh, in the next year. Uh, in the previous presentations, we've covered some of the cost pressures which are causing that upward pressure on, on rates revenue and also the Council's proposal, uh, the things that it's doing to reduce um, costs and increase revenue through fees and charges to help reduce that and, and get that that rates revenue increased down to the 9.06%. This is the first of a number of options the council considered to further reduce rates revenue and for one reason or another decided against proceeding with. So in this first one, this was about not funding depreciation. So funding de depreciation is about collecting funds during the lifetime of an asset. So whether that's a, a pipe, a, a water treatment plant, a road, a building. So collecting funding during the life of that asset. So to help fund the cost of replacing the asset at the end of its life. So one option we considered was stopping collecting those funds for a year. Um, the council decided against this option because it would, would, would result in the council having to borrow more uh, when those assets reach the end of their lifetime. Um, so that in itself ha has further impacts on rates in terms of both payments for interest and for repayments of those loans. Effectively, it's a short term measure that will have longer term impacts. Um, and for this reason, the council decided against that proposal. The second option the council looked at was to uh, not make repayments on its loans for three waters activities for the forthcoming year. So we have obviously have loans for water supply, wastewater and stormwater activities. Uh, as you are no doubt aware, the council's three water assets um, and services are due to move to uh, new uh, to new uh, water entities from July 2024. Um, so before the council could make a decision like this, it would uh, it would need to get the approval of the national transition unit. So this is the unit that's looking after the transition from councils to the new water entities. We think it's highly unlikely that the transition unit would give us permission to uh, to stop repayments on the three waters loans. That's because uh, the effect of it would be to increase the loans the new entities would in, inherit from the council uh, when they came in, come into existence. In addition to that, uh, effectively the council, the, the community will still have to fund the repayment of those loans, uh, whether that's through the uh, new entities or through the council itself. So effectively it's a short term measure with longer term consequences. Um, for that reason, the council decided against this option the council currently provides funding for some school pools in rural areas to open over the summer period for uh, community use recreational swimming. One option we considered was to reduce or eliminate this funding. However, with the dreadful statistics that we have for drowning in this country, the council felt it was important to retain access to these opportunities for people to learn to swim and develop water confidence in rural areas. Uh, for this reason, the council decided against making this saving and uh, reducing rates by this method. The council provides funding for some community grant schemes. These are aimed at helping community organisations provide services in the community. In this case, we looked at uh, some grant schemes that fit in the current in, the, in these following categories: so, community and economic, sport and recreation facilities, youth and children, arts, culture and heritage, museums, festival events, social services, environment, and emergency services. So, we looked at whether to reduce the budgets for these grant schemes or eliminate the budgets entirely. 
On balance, the council decided this was a relatively small amount of money that has a big impact on community organisations and through their work on the community as a whole. And for this reason, it decided against this as a way of reducing the pressure on rates. The council provides a number of community centres around the district that host a range of community activities. We considered reducing the budgets for maintenance on these community centres next year. However, we decided against that because of the importance of these uh, community centres as community hubs and as the, as the location for many great community activities. We're also concerned that it would be a very much a short term measure and not carrying out maintenance now would potentially lead to higher costs in the future, which ratepayers would have to fund at that stage. For this reason, we decided against this option. To help reduce the pressure on rates, we considered whether to significantly reduce uh, the services we provide to the community. These are services that we consulted on as part of Tasman's 10 year plan uh, back in 2021. Many of the services we provide are required by legislation, so we don't really have a choice about providing them. So they're not discretionary in that sense. In terms of the discretionary services we provide, uh, the council considered that these were important to and appreciated by the community and cutting those services would have a really detrimental effect. I think this is particularly the case during a, a period of uh, economic hardship. Um, for these reasons, the council decided not to take this option. We currently hold approximately $8 million worth of emissions trading scheme credits that are not required to cover the obligations for our forestry operations when the, our forestry when it's harvested. Emissions trading credits can be sold on the market, so this presents an option that the council needed to consider. Selling these credits, however, would be a one-off injection of income next year, and without selling a similar uh, value of credits in the following year, it would create an even bigger rates revenue increase in the following year. Also, the price of, of emissions trading scheme credits is likely to increase in the future. If we sell the credits now, we may find ourselves having to buy credits at a higher price later to cover some of our, our greenhouse gas emissions from things like the landfill, for instance. Retaining the, the ETS credits also provides a buffer that we could use to help the district recover from something like a, a natural hazard event. So we could sell them at that point and help in, in recovery from something like that. For these reasons, the council decided not to proceed with this option as a way of reducing rates revenue pressure. We have approximately $20 million surplus from our forestry activities. So we've been harvesting forests and receiving income from log sales, which has built up this surplus. Part of these surpluses are already used to offset how much we need to collect from rates each year. So that's, that happens on a regular basis. But the council considered using more of the surpluses to further reduce the rate pressures next year. At the mo moment, most of our forestry surpluses are committed for the next few years in repaying loans on the Waimea Community Dam. This might change in the future as part of the Three Waters reform. So some or all of the, the dam debt may transfer to the new Three Waters entity. Um, we hope to have more certainty about this in the next few months, but at the moment it's not clear whether that will be the case. The council decided not to, to use any further surpluses to reduce pressure on rates because of the uncertainty around the, the dam debt and because, re, re, because using the surpluses to reduce rates has the effect of increasing our debt uh, and increasing our debt at a time when interest rates are high and yeah, we're having to then fund the, the repayment of interest through rates. In addition, uh, this could potentially result in us exceeding our debt cap that we have set in our financial strategy. So for these reasons, the council decided against this option. As I mentioned in the previous presentation, we are proposing to reduce the number of new 
staff positions in the next year, particularly those that are funded by rates. However, we did look at whether to reduce staff costs further to help reduce the pressure on rates. Uh, staff costs are made up of um, staff salaries and then the cost of any new positions. Reducing uh, rate, rate funded positions further would threaten our ability to deliver the current services that we provide to the community. And as I've talked about on a previous slide, many of those are not discretionary, so they're required by legislation. Uh, and then those that are discretionary, we feel are particular, of particular value to the community. In addition, the labour market for school staff is incredibly competitive at the moment. And if we don't pay, pay salaries that are equivalent to other employers, we're likely to lose staff that are vital to providing those services in the community to Tasman residents. Uh, we we'll also have to find it very difficult to replace those staff in the current market. For those, these reasons, the council decided against this option. As I covered in a, in a previous presentation, we are proposing to increase many of the fees and charges by 10%. This is a, a catch up of inflation. So we've underinflated fees over the last few years, and this is a catch up. The council of course considered not doing this. So not increasing the fees by as, as much uh, to ease the financial burden on those who use the services. However, if we did this, the projected reduction in, in income from fees and charges would have to be made up from rates. So this would increase rates further. Uh, and that would be the case whether or not ratepayers use the individual services. As a result, the council decided that it would proceed with the uh, proposal of increasing the fees by 10% as a general rule. Okay, those were the options the council considered. Um, hopefully you understand those options now and council's thinking around deciding not to proceed with those. This is a consultation, so please tell us what you think about those decisions. You may agree with some and disagree with others, but please make a submission. Um, the Shape Tasman website is a great place to start, so you can make your submission through that or by emailing us at the address on the slide or dropping us a line at, to, the, to one of the council's buildings or service centres or by mail. Submissions close on 30th of April. Thank you for listening to this presentation.